Moving out here is probably the most irrational decision we ever took in our life. But now, looking back, it's amazing to see how one intuitive decision led to another. We never set out to make a film. We just felt like breaking away. And not that our life wasn't good. We had everything we ever wanted. And more. But that was kind of the problem. I felt I was buying into a system that tells us that more is better. I felt I was plodding along with everyone else, as if in a state of hypnosis. What changed me and my thinking was becoming a mother. I asked myself, what is it that I'm trying to achieve? What do I contribute to the world they grow up in? I knew I had to break the pattern. I didn't just want to exchange the city life for a life close to nature. But I wanted to learn, learn from people who live a connected life, a life more down to earth. I loved our years in the woods. The simple, uncomplicated life. Living a day at a time, and living with the seasons. At the time we had no idea that our move to the woods was only the start of a much bigger journey. In the four years we lived in the woods, we learned so much from the Native American way of life. But what inspired us most was the way of thinking, the way of being of some of the elders. Especially Nowatan. Meeting this medicine man had a profound impact on us. He triggered something in us, a longing to explore the ancient ways of looking at life and gaining a deeper understanding of the old teachings, which seem now more relevant than ever. It was meeting the Watton that inspired us to go on a journey to find people like him. People who have held on to a connection with the natural world. Wisdom keepers who might hold the key to renewal. We decided to travel the world together with our children, to find these keepers of wisdom, the keepers of the earth. Said and done, 
with it because either that we talk about creation what is it we don't like about creation because we're all things of creation as humans somewhere along the way I think the original teachings got lost among all people It was a run-down building. It reminded me of an old army barrack somewhere. Long rooms upstairs. Floors were sunk from age. Anyway, many, many medicine people were arriving at the same place. I decided I would go up them stairs because of the medicine men medicine people coming there to help. It seemed so real that it was actually happening. That I went upstairs and started looking around to see what needed to be done. The floor was covered with litter. So I started looking for brooms to start cleaning up. January 21st, we are on our way, on the road, for a year. One backpack and a camera each. It's exciting, but the first month has not been easy. Nothing has worked out to plan. And despite the months of research, we are not getting to the right people. We feel we have wasted a lot of time. You want some medicine? And on top of that, we've all been really sick. Levy is still refusing to eat after two weeks. I worry. Is this really all worth it? We wonder. Have we been too optimistic that we could pull this off by ourselves as a family? Without any crew or support? Levy, come. Come <laughs> we knew that finding Earth Keepers wouldn't be easy. But I think we've been trying too hard, trying to follow a plan. I know we have to let go and stop worrying about the outcome. We simply have to follow the stories and trust we will find the people we are looking for. Our only obstacle is our own worry and fear. It's these little voices coming in. What if we don't find these people? And what if it doesn't work out? I wonder if these tribal communities have the same problem of fear. And how do you see that the absence of fear 
is related to your people being content, being happy. So Your way of life seems all centered around community. Our world is much more based on the individual, which is also what has brought us progress. How do you view this progress? Uh -huh. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do I'm going to do I'm going to do Tadunia. <laughs> You are never yield to much that I hope and the matter is not a lot of money for the matter. And the Gunaya Rada and the Gunan Guapi, she bear a Gunadian and then. And I do not be one of Guapi Benda. I'm beginning to read an error to my daughter, a little way. You know, I remember things in my childhood days. To me, what became great teachings from my dad, my mother, 
simple little things that some people would not even consider as something great. Learning to live with the seasons and what those seasons produce. Sometimes there's an abundance with the seasons, and other times not. You simply learn to live with what is provided. And living within that framework is a simple life of taking only with what you need. I was giving thanks to that water. So when we give thanks to the water, we give thanks to ourselves because we're a people of water. And it's a part of showing respect for creation. Kiru <laughs> Nani, 
Who speaks for those birds and animals in the trees? They have the same rights we do. They are part of creation. Mankind has messed up everything. And how much more longer is it going to go before man will finally admit that? That we're the cause of all the troubles of the world. People don't have patience in the city. There's no patience. I see a lot of people running, running on time. The time is very important for people that are running. Where you have to go to work, you have to run. 
come back home, you have to run. It's a city of people running. You don't have to run there. Take your time. We don't run. No, well, well, why should we run? But there is nothing to run. It is there. We'll get there. <laughs> I know why these words of Balganyu resonated so much with me. Because she was really talking about me. When we moved to the woods, it took me a long time before I really slowed down and was truly grounded. But it's not the answer for all of us to go back and live in nature. I think the real challenge is, how do we live a connected life in our fast-paced world? Meeting these urban earthkeepers made us see that it is possible even in an urban landscape. The land is everything to me, how I've been brought up. I carry that within me. I feel like I'm a mother, imitating mother Earth on the stage. Every day she's creating. She's making new hills or fountains or small things like grass. That is something so special. Everywhere I go, I feel that energy because I am the land. We come from Northern Territory in the uh, north coast where people call Arnhem Land. We call it Yirgala, and that's where I was born. We had a beautiful parent, not only loving us, but sharing the knowledge and teaching the knowledge of survival. To be aware of what's around the land, where not to go there, or to go there, not to eat, to eat, not to swim, swim. April 27. We are now on our way to a remote island off the north coast. We have heard a story about Lak Lak, an Aboriginal medicine woman who has dedicated her life to raising troubled kids in the old ways. We are excited to be allowed into the island, which is normally sealed off to outsiders. Lak Lak apparently made the exception when she heard we are a family traveling with children. The gatekeepers were strict about the conditions of the visit. Two nights only, bring your own food and shelter, and no filming. But when we arrived on the island, things turned out quite differently. family, <laughs>
Pilih ngaya, wanga. Education department ko, pilih dalam ni school, education, jangan jangan berkole yo. Pilih walbuk lo ko jangan berkole. Ya kata orang orang nak school ni, unal pilih dalam rica ngaya nak, rica ngah, nyena nakal. Bayang kata orang nak school ko, bayang kata orang wanga school ngah, nyena. Mana jenar rock kunci? Awal ngaji banyak. Tapi banyak orang ada nenek tu kan, yuta. Planet itu nara. Kapan yang kokongan? Banyak orang dia kah kapokongan jenar rock kunci. Banyak terpam. Beli ni beli. Banyak orang dia kah mayam daruk. Yul ngan. Kah dia kah marton banyak orang daruk ko. Awal ngaji orang daruk ko. Nenek lebih jenuh yang daripada. Mereka kumpulan ini, caca wo, ngaji wo, kacaca dalam ngaji dalam gua rumbal wo. Alam lingkup, lima lingkup, kangen apa lingkup? Alam ro, caca ngarong kena kong ngaji wo malay mo. Ya kalau rebu mengaji, kal kal kum ngalai ro ya kang ngaji. Buk mak jangai. Buk mak yulo nungo dal kum ya kau ya. Pilih yang mana? Kalau ya kau nak ambil kum, eh? Ya kau nak ambil kum. Mana pemain? Mangi, Yolongo, Bilanyan, Banyan Singan, mana kajian nampi aman, Bungkol Warton, Penguin banyak anak pemain lagi, mana pemain? It was always the women that had total control of all the children. They're already witnessing the certain traits. You can smell. And if they saw that in one of them boys, they would tell that to uh, the elders. Keep your eye on this one. He shows promise. Let's walk back. Go. That's how the the great leaders of the all the chiefs of the history here. That that's how they were raised. They were watched from the time they were little boys. There was leadership among the women. They were watched in the same way. Rakyat mendau jangan lengko, anal pen ngaji lagi ni nan, yang lengko, ngaji nang jenama. Rakyat dalam ayam orangnya elder, beri cing ngam klien ngah. Anu mado makel ujun, ngama kama yang dah kudarok, anal pen ngaji ruang anu melengkol. Pernah yang kau ngaji ngupan, apa yang kau nampak nang almaro? Ia kerana lebih jun banyak banyak, pilih banyak ngaji lagi. Malang kalau ni na, lajak kau. Malipun ada banyak dukam 
kärjun. We might meet in spirit or somewhere. Yeah. That's what I'm feeling. Probably. Yeah, okay, probably. You are. Or can we meet spirit? June 21st. I feel at home here. On the island there is no yesterday, no tomorrow, only today. One thing I'm learning from my Aboriginal family is that time doesn't exist. Two nights have become two weeks. Two weeks have become two months. <laughs> where I grow up it's all about going to school to gain more knowledge mm. but somehow I don't see people become wiser I've seen it a lot and the wise and the old one or balanda but the long school learning 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 man get man get man get woke up woke up woke up and I'm in university and I'll go taken you can now you can name up, them up. I'm going to be the same. It's here and there. Nothing comes out. No more better. Study, you're the studying, and you're the concept right. Only time you know that to me, but then you know written by paper, you know. But then you know that to me, you know. But smooth, then I'm going to go. 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 Time, you know. You know what I want, man. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get the money. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get the money. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get the money. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get the money. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get the money. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get the money. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get the money. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get the money. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get the money. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get the money. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get the money. I'm not
eliki iyiok enaa tenelo naai nelotu engoloto naai naa naa inji eesi amu iyiolo ajo meeta oltung'ani lemeeta enkoitoi enye aa imaniki sininye aa ore oltung'ani litu isuma nimaniki eeta naai enkoitoi namitie enakop nimaniki eeta enaas peyie irrinyio ina toki najo alotu alotu aya neeku naa keeta nena oitoi muj nidipa aiteng'ena iyiok nena baa pookin netutaka iyiok nena baa pookin inkoitoi pookin nikununo. The youth of today has the hardest task of ever one of us. It is up to the youth to bring about a change. And it's been said that if they succeeded, they would be the ones that had created the eternal peace. I think that's what's happening now. Slowly. If it catches all one place, it's gonna catch all the other places. People will fall a suit. July 13th, traveling through Asia, one thought keeps coming back. How is this change Nawatan talked about going to happen when the majority of the people on this planet are only just embarking on the journey of the American or European dream? Aspiring to prosperity in a similar way our parents and grandparents did. But who are we to tell anyone that that aspiration doesn't lead to happiness? and that the planet can't sustain a lifestyle of mass consumption. What totally amazes me on this journey is how earth keepers in other parts of the world speak with the same voice as Nawatan and how they all share the same rather optimistic vision about the current state of the world. They all see the hardship and chaos in the world today as a sign that we are on the brink of a huge global transformation brought about by the common people who start walking their true path and start working together. ऐसे सारे जन से भी आंदा तो फिर वो तो पहले साल जी की चर्चा ऐसे हो जाती है। हमारे पास नांगर जो तंत्री कर पास नहीं है, बल्कि सब लग रहा तो सब के पास है। ही सब कराएं मिलके जुड़के करना जरूरी तब तो हमारे भविष्य आगे बढ़े और पिछड़े रहेंगे तो ऐसे तो फिर पीछे चलेंगे नहीं तो धरती माता नहीं रहती देन से सब जीवन है माँ दे रहा है कुछ भी दे रहा है उसको खाएँ कहो पहले हमारे बाबा रही से बैग और बाद में हमारे पिताजी रही से बैग और बाद में पिताजी के पीछे मैं नहीं पाया हूँ पिताजी खत्म हो गए तो भी पिताजी मेरा सही है क्योंकि बता रहे हैं ये झाड़ है वाह ऐसे झाड़ है वाह ये दवाई ऐसे ये झाड़ की दवाई ऐसा पड़ता है सब के लिए मिलते हैं वहाँ जंगल जो जंगल में जो सजीवन बूटी है तो एक जन के लिए नहीं है वो सब के जीवन के रक्षा के लिए बने हैं
We see more and more people who want to take responsibility for their own fate, including their own health. What's the key to living life without major disease? If not only knowing the medicines, best healer or doctor in the world can now totally heal anything without your help. The patients furnish half through your own faith of believing. Darna ne chahi. Sab se apar hir dila. Kahi mat baata. Khol ke jao darwaja khulla. Haan haan sab se samu khate hain. अब यहाँ मैं गुट क्या था वहाँ जाके फिर कहा करो पैदल चलो तो देखो कितना चांटी फाफा कीड़ा काठा खोने थे उकरो भी तो इतना ही बड़ा जीव है हमरो भी इतना जीव है मालिक माटी बड़े बड़े हैं तो क्या होइस हमारे तो बड़े हैं हाथी जानवरों भी हैं मगर छोटा सी चांटी डर रहा था फूकत रिंग थे We're all the same, basically. Whether we plants or animals or what. It seems like there's a kinship there when you, when you look at things in a certain way. Well, the difference is, you know, we look different. <laughs> some fly, some crawl. We can never say that we are the only ones that we should be concerned about. That's why life is really simple. When it comes right down to it, life is simple. But we make it complicated ourselves with our thought patterns and, and what other people has put in place that controls all other people, you know, that, that, uh, that changes individuals and how they think once that is done. It is not free thinking people anymore. We're all under control of someone. Or we find ourselves in trouble. ตัวแรกกว่าที่นี่ตรงนี้ที่มีเนี่ยนกกับนกกับสมมุติคนนี้เองเนี่ยปัจเจกนกกับหายไม่ได้เนี่ยนกนี่ปัจเจกเฮ
Nuna Aran Ri were into the hunger post that till he can in timber to put you it. He can so in on Kerma, when got in. That's where he can. He can younger you at in a hat to care post in, Nuyanga, he can younger post in, Nuyanga. I couldn't sleep last night. Everything is awake, also my mind. I am in awe of the abundance and total harmony of the forest, the beauty but also the ugliness that goes on, the destruction of it all. But I'm just passing through, observing. Have I become the tourist? I wonder what it feels like to be truly part of it all, like the Ashwa. The drago y podemos poner en la parte la, del cortada. Esto nos hace, nos ayuda a cicatrizar rápido. Our little ones are called tamarind monkeys, okay? Little ones are big. I saw this little black thing. We saw I saw a little black thing jumping down. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't see anything. The kids love the rainforest. Today they caught me off guard, asking me about its destruction. Dad? Did you know that we lose 80,000 acres per day, an area the size of England? And that we lose more than 50,000 plant and animal species each year as well? Why that? Why don't people get it? Why are people spoiling it for us? Can't anyone stop this? How can I possibly answer these questions without being a hypocrite? Mashi, 
Taking part in this ceremony was one of the most powerful experiences of my life. I deeply felt homecoming, a deep feeling recognizing where I came from. I see how the plant is like a portal to a whole different dimension, connecting me with my subconscious mind. was the power to have dreams and visions. I remember when I was on that hill fasting, it came to me that faith is the most important thing above all other things. And without that, we have nothing. It's the greatest force that can be had. And from that, I envisioned a man living way out in the woods somewhere. That man never went anywhere. But he had all the answers that I needed. And I think there is a person such as that. Again, that's base. That there is someone like that out there. The whole thing, what I'm saying, we can create a base on our own without going to any book. There's nothing that we cannot do with that ability. It's a natural ability that we all have. Ignace <laughs> In the title, Yana Pare, Mama Pachi Calpatoi. Lapan Calpaman, Kiromikuna, Tangar Hankuki, Albacon, Echaricur, Romikuna, Kuiril, Hatun Calpacu, Hatun Calpacu, Hatun, in the head of some Hatun Yana Pagnikos. Opechagan the Stagos. Walking up, Miho, 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 Sapan is going to make it. No chance for Puranis man. The Imam man make it. No true work. Just chill. Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't ask. 
Today, as I was standing in front of these immense stones, seeing the seamless way they've been put together, it made me wonder. How were the Incas able to do this thousands of years ago? Something that seems impossible to us today. The further we are getting into our journey, the more I begin to understand what Nawatan meant when he talked about the limitless possibilities of human potential. Could it be that those who are truly connected to the natural world and tuned into the different levels of energy are capable of working with the force of nature rather than against it? I've been to places that were just as real as I am sitting here. by traveling in spirit. Kind of makes me think sometimes, knowing about that gift, I can leave at any time, which could be with what happened with great nations, that they were highly spiritual people Not like us, we are common. Our spirit would probably have a blue light. Where the highly spiritual ones are totally white. This is what I have learned. This is all the world there is when you realize that you are not satisfied the way things are. That you start being a seeker. Not somebody else's truth, but your own. I'm 
干啦干干干，嗯嗯，开工。那过来正月都爱，嗯，他妈叫你干嘛过苦苦呢啊？嗯，他妈叫我认识。这下，这下干，过度干，过度那，这下打哦，我们得过度卡，卡多啊，卡个嘿，我们过度的卡，我讲，我卡多干嘛干死过来，但我卡干嘛，哪过来，但我卡开个车子。October 7th, driving through the Kalahari Desert feels like approaching the cradle of humanity. We are on our way to the oldest living tribe on the planet, the San or Bushmen. Even though medicine people around the world use different medicines and have different ceremonies, I've come to see that underneath they are all doing the same thing. They tap into the same source, using their connection with spirit. To understand this connection better, we have come to see the sun. Because in this barren land where nothing grows, they have nothing else to rely on than their direct connection to spirit. Thank you. A child in the village has fallen ill and the medicine men are preparing a healing that will take place tonight. To the son, illness and therefore healing goes beyond the individual. It involves the whole community, including the ancestors. What we are about to witness is probably one of the oldest forms of healing in the world. Tonight, 
In order to be a complete medicine person, there has to be a spiritual side. To, or it's incomplete. There's no healing without that. I now see that healing goes way beyond curing a physical ailment. But if healing takes place on the level of spirit, and if it's our spirit that gets healed, does that mean that the impact of that healing goes beyond our life, beyond our death? Healing is removing an energy from events in the past, collective past, that's causing that person separation from their essence. When I heal myself, I heal the world. And when I know myself, I know the world. Because everyone is part of everyone else. If someone's ill here, it affects someone here. Everything affects everything. We're not separate, really, when we go to the energy of all beings. The love that goes with that, there's a love that goes with being human and caring about other people. We don't have to express that worldwide. We all have to feel that. For that to go out with no thoughts of prayer even. But to have that thought in your mind of caring about others, that's enough. 
That's our potential to help others without ever knowing them who they are. That is what has to be brought out among human beings. Sometimes think that my thoughts are yours, and your thoughts are mine. Without us ever knowing one another, it comes down to human nature of how we all feel, regardless of color, male or female. That we are one. That's when you, you see a great beauty and understanding when you can come to those terms of seeing it like that. It makes you want to look forward to another cycle. We're part of everything. I mean, it's the wave to see, is to see the wave. But to remember when you were a grain of sand, we are the four elements. And in some rites of passage, people said, thus you are and thus you will return. The rite of passage of death is beautiful because in that space, once you've gone into a spirit journey, you're not in the emotion, you're not attached. This is timelessness. I learned that when I, I learned that I died. Well, I felt my heart kind of like it squeezed, like it's, that it hurt. I saw something like, like a giant tube, it came down all around me, underneath me. I went up. As I was going up, that's when my heart felt like it, it hurt three times. It really hurt. And I was taken to a place that looked like this silvery white. That's the way that whole place looked like where I was, where they took me. to take an extra step into the nether world, which is on the other side. I'm not scared of death. I have no fear of it. There's a reason for that.
When Noatan was here, when he was here in this world, I really, really liked it. I really liked us living together in this world. But I also really like that I know he's over there watching out for all of us. That there's no end. There's not an end to, to our past ways being. They're with us. You know, they, it's just a different life. Um, the connection that we have is like that. We still continue to work together in a spiritual way. It's not mystical, folks. It's not mystical. It's to stand in the woods and you feel and hear the wind. That's communication. You know, if you walk on the moss, that, that really almost iridescent moss that's in those wetlands outside, and you feel that, you, that it's almost carrying you instead of you walking, that's communication. You need to trust your own self and trust you're not alone. And that is a higher consciousness that's not dictated by any desires and no memory. It'll always guide you. Some people call it ancestors. Some people call it the angels. Whatever is within you. Shortly after we returned from the journey, I lost four loved ones. Being confronted with death proved to be one of the biggest teachings. I have realized that if I can accept death, only then I can accept everything that comes with life. Death no longer carries the same weight. To me, death is more like the goodbyes on our journey. Not able to see these people any longer, but knowing they are still there, knowing I can still reach them. Our hearts have the truth. When we see each other, we see the heart of one another. You know, that's a that's a living in a prayerful way. You know, you know, there's a physical form, but you know, we look at the heart, and wow, <laughs> there's, some, there's some amazing, amazing people in this world. You want people to know themselves. That's the deal. And to be able to to connect with their own, their own hearts. I mean, it's their own spirit. How we live every day is a ceremony. Our journey of the past five years has given me a rock-steady faith in the workings of life. I feel part of an ever-larger family and a true sense of belonging. No longer do I worry for the future of my children, because we have all the answers. If only we dare to ask ourselves the right questions. I know that if I stay connected, I have access to an infinite source of wisdom and guidance. In the end, we are all keepers of the earth.
Thank you.